Uh, so welcome to the fifth video in the discrete structures series and in this video we'll be looking at uh, the concept of uh, functions and then we'll be looking into a few concepts within functions you know the sum and product of functions and then we'll be looking at the different types of functions okay so getting into our first topic so what are functions and this should be a concept that we already know because we've been you know familiar with this for a long time so functions are essentially a mapping from an input space into an output space and and that mapping needs to have certain properties now this is discrete structures and then we'll approach the concept of functions using discrete sets right so let's just imagine there's a set of elements one two and three and there's another set let's say b with elements two four and six right? and let's say there's this this kind of mapping that one maps to two two maps to four and three maps to six right so you know this is my input space also known as my domain and this is my output space also known as the co domain and there's uh, a range of values that the function maps to let's say this uh, set b also contained an element 8 if it did that now 8 is an element that is not mapped to anything in a so there will uh, you know oftentimes be a subset in in the codomain that is actually mapped to the domain right and and that subset where it is actually mapped is is called the range all right so three basic concepts of domain codomain and range and let's say even before you know something can be called a function a relation like this can only be called a function if this property is met uh, and the property states that each element in the first set a should be mapped to a unique element in the second set right so let me note that down each element in a maps to a unique element in b and what does the word unique really mean here right so unique does not really mean different unique doesn't mean different in our case the word unique means you know being the only one we want to call a relation a function if each element in in the domain is uniquely mapped to only one element in the range right so the same element in the range could be an input to some other you know element in in the domain so in this case you are saying one is mapped to two but there could be another thing that is also mapped to two and that is fair as, as of this rule and that is allowed but what is not allowed is for the same element to be mapped to two different outputs right so each element has to be mapped to a unique element and unique in, in the sense that only one element right all right enough jargon why even uh, again right so we should always ask the why question so why define something like a function and 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 put all of these restrictions right okay so you, you are allowed to map two things to the same thing but you're not allowed to map one thing to multiple right so let's let's look at and look at a typical example see because the idea of all of these these topics is to model the real world and to you know construct useful things so i want you to you know imagine a very typical example right so let's say i'm, I'm using my phone and i'm on the camera app and i want to take a picture right pretty simple use case so i have my solder icon here and my volume icon here and see and there is one one output that i really want from this phone at this time you know so getting a picture right so i want a picture to be output from from this camera you know there could be multiple ways to take the picture right so i could i could press the solder icon here i could you know press the volume icon that works on most smartphones or i could even use my voice maybe on some phones say hey you know cheese or something like that and that would take a picture for me right so this is same as you know multiple inputs doing the same thing right getting the same output right in, in a function in sort of like this so multiple inputs are allowed to to map to the same output right and this is fine right and then i would want this this feature for convenience right i would want multiple ways to take pictures so that i could use any way that i want to but what happens if i let the same input have multiple outputs so on on pressing this button right my phone is sometimes taking a picture sometimes you know let's say switching off sometimes playing a random music out of out of my gallery that's not really predictable right so i, I don't really want that i want a, a given input to always produce the same output right and and it's, it's good it, it's fine if multiple inputs produce the same output but what should not definitely happen is is for the behavior to be unpredictable right for the same input to to have 
multiple outputs. So this idea of functions is really uh, useful in many topics and uh, computer science topics like ours and this idea of unique mapping is, is also really really relevant. All right, so that's that's the basic thing about functions and why we want the uniqueness uh, properties. Okay, the next thing that we want to see is is uh, the sum and product of functions. So let me pan my board a little bit. Okay, so sum and product of functions. So this is kind of a limited topic in scope because let's say a sum. You know what does a sum really mean, right? Sum only makes sense in terms of numbers, and, and so does product, right? In in a different group like set, we would be talking about unions and intersections, right? In, in boolean algebra we'll be talking about and and or and other other boolean algebra logic you know functions so when we say sum and product of functions we are in the limited scope where sum and product is actually uh, available and we don't actually mean the product of functions it doesn't really make sense to multiply functions but it does make sense to multiply values of those functions at specific points right so let's say i have one function f uh, and that's that's defined on the set of say real numbers and it maps every element to twice its value right so whatever x is it outputs 2x and i have another function g of x uh, which does something different right so let's say it, it takes a square of the value and then adds a one why not right so something random that this this function does what does it mean uh, to take you know the the product of these functions right so let's say Mm, you know in, in continuous I could just multiply these functions algebraically and that would give me a product of the function but what am I really doing when I'm doing that multiplication right and since this is discrete mathematics let's let's look at it in a, in a discrete way right so really multiplying two functions is the idea of looking at the value of the functions at the same input and then multiplying them so let's say this function at x equals 2 produces 4 right so x, x equals 2 it, it's producing 4 and then this function at x equals 2 is producing 4 plus 1 is 5, right? 2 squared plus 1. So the second function is producing a 5. So the product of these two functions at this point would be producing a 20, right? So pretty easy concept. And the same thing goes for sum. And in this case, we'll just be adding the numbers. Pretty uh, trivial concept about sum and product of, of functions at specific points. The next topic in line are the different types of functions. And these are again you know different definitions that we have to to represent different types of functions so that we can identify them and and you know, exploit certain properties that they have so the first type of function that we we'll look at is called an injective function and this is also called a one to one function you should note the difference between one to one function and one to one correspondence right so it's, it's kind of like a different thing but okay one to one uh, in the sense that every output is uniquely mapped to only one input so in a function, there's, there's no way for, you know, one input to map to multiple outputs. That's not allowed at all. But what we're allowed to have is for multiple inputs to cause the same output. So these are really functions in which for every element in the output, there's only one way to get it, right? To get that particular output. So what would it really look like in, in terms of Venn diagrams? It would probably look like this. I have a set A and a set B. So for each input, there could be an output. Each input has to have an output but what cannot happen is for the same output to be a result of two inputs right so i don't want to have the situation where two things trigger the same output right even though that's normally allowed in functions that is not allowed in an injective function and by the way there could be elements left over here so this would still be an injective function so one to one still only suggests that for each input there's one output and and that output is not replicable by providing any other input sort of like a situation let, let's say when i when i have you know let's say a few chocolates that i want to distribute over children but there are too many children right so the best i can do is to make sure that the same child doesn't get two chocolates so to speak so there will obviously be some uh, that are left because i cannot help that situation but something i can do is to make sure the distribution is as fair as possible right so just just only an example right there are so many examples in the real world but these would be injective functions and opposite uh, to this opposite to injective functions are many to one functions many to one functions it doesn't have a very special name like like you know the injective function does but the idea here is uh, in these kind of functions many inputs might be creating the same outputs and at least one many to one relationship must be existent in 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 a many to one function so getting over this concept the other category of functions that you want to discuss are called surjective functions and the surjective functions are also called onto right and onto functions are those functions in which 
there is no output that is left alone right so it, it, it doesn't really talk about how many inputs or how many outputs are, are mapping against each other but it wants to make sure that in the output space there is no output that doesn't map to an input right so i have four inputs and three outputs maybe and two of these inputs might be causing the same output this might be causing this output and like so right and if this is the case for two uh, functions sorry two sets a and b we would call this a subsurjective function because there is no element left over here and in other words i want the range of the function to be equal to the co domain so this is the necessary criteria for a function to be surjective right and there is a final category of functions which is the polar opposite of surjective functions the onto functions and these are called into functions and these and these don't have any specific names either but these as you would understand are the functions that have at least one output that doesn't map to an input right so there is this guy left over here and this doesn't map to any input now there could be a multi, multi you know many to one relationship that doesn't matter but there should be at least one output that doesn't map to a given input so these kind of functions are called into functions and a very special thing happens if we combine the ideas of of surjective functions with injective functions so what happens if a function is both surjective and injective okay so the next thing is bijective function so a bijective function is is such a function that is both injective as well as surjective so it has to have both properties so what does that lead us to so let's say i have one input space a and one output space of b and i want to represent this this mapping between a and b that is injective right so that means i'm not allowed to have the same output come from multiple inputs so it has to be one to one and surjective means i'm not allowed to have anything left so there should not be any element in the core domain that is not mapped to some element in my domain so if we ensure these two properties are true what we end up with is a one to one correspondence one to one correspondence so one to one correspondence means i could correspond each element uniquely to to its output that process would be true for the entire space without leaving anything in the output space alone right so there should not be anything in the output space alone and these things should be one to one and i think it would be fair to say that you know everything that we learned till now the injective and surjective and the other function types we did that to to define these bijective functions right so because these are the most common ones and the most helpful ones in in the real world so when we say one to one correspondence it's a really important concept in counting so let's say i want to uh, let's say i have a bag of apples and another bag of oranges so let me draw apples bad apples and Hmm, let's say mangoes right because for me both of them are around i cannot create a distinction i'll call these mangoes and these oval ones are mangoes all right so smiley face now i want to make sure that the number of apples in this uh, you know sack is the same as the number of mangoes in here i could do it by subtraction right so i have three over here and i have three over here and if i subtract three and three i get a zero which is you know what i want if the result is zero i can say that these two numbers are equal right but in order to do this i need to be familiar with the concept of subtraction in the first place right so i need to to understand that i, I i'm allowed to subtract and, and that sounds like a pretty lame you know thing to say but it in in terms of uh, you know group theory and an elementary basic number theory these things are also really relevant right so where does the idea of subtraction actually come from and it actually comes from the idea of one to one correspondence see what i can do see i can i can remove one apple and for each apple that i remove i can remove one mango so i'll, I'll remove an apple remove a mango i'll do the same process again remove an apple remove a mango do the same thing again remove the apple remove the mango and if on doing this 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 you know iteratively multiple times if i'm left with both of my sacks being empty i could tell for sure that these have the same number of elements so i didn't actually have to know any mathematics or know how to subtract i, I could just try and correspond each element with some other element and keep repeating that process to actually assert equality between two sets right it's i think fair to say that you know the number theory operations are a direct outcome of counting and and the correspondence rules so i think that concludes uh, our discussion about uh, functions and different uh, types of functions uh, especially one to one correspondence the bijective functions and their importance and and if you have any questions about these topics yes feel free to uh, ask them in the comments below
In the next video, we'll be covering inverses of functions and, and the function compositions. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.